Welcome to FM Bench, foundation model benchmarking tool, one of the simplest ways of benchmarking any foundation model on any AWS generative AI service. Here is the FM Bench website, which provides complete instructions on how to install FM Bench, how to configure it, and even how to customize it. Let's say you want to benchmark foundation models on Bedrock. You can do that through instructions provided here. SageMaker, EC2, EKS, all of the generative AI services, everything is available on this website. Now it also provides a search bar for looking for configuration files of interest. We have provided configuration files for several open source, first party and third party foundation models on all different AWS services. You can click on any of these configuration files to get a quick preview of what it in involves. You can use these files as they are with no changes in your account, or you could even use these configuration files as templates to create new files for your own specific use case for models of interest. Now, FM Bench is an open source Python 3 package. Here is the GitHub repository of, uh, of FM Bench. It's available under the MIT Zero license. Here you would see a quick start guide which provides a cloud formation template for launching a, a, a cloud formation stack to install FM Bench in your account or even in the Golf Cloud. When we launch this cloud formation template, it will create a SageMaker notebook on which to run FM Bench. FM Bench is a Python 3 package, so you can easily pip install it on your EC2 machine and uh, run it from there as well. Once we move to the Jupyter Notebook that has been created by the CloudFormation template, we can run it as we'll explain it to you right now. Once the CloudFormation stack has been deployed, all you have to do is in the notebook, install FM Bench by simply doing a pip install FM Bench. Now that I've installed the FM Bench package, all that I have to do to simply run a benchmarking test is enter in a single command, FM Bench config file and then point to the path of that config file, which can either be in HTTPS link, an S3 URI, or it can even be a local path where my config file resides. All I have to do now to run this benchmarking test is hit enter. Now, as a part of this test, you would see multiple outputs here. In brief, FM Bench performs a couple of steps. It sets up the environment, generates the data that is used to benchmark the models that you want to benchmark, deploys the model for you, runs inferences against those models, and then runs evaluations to measure accuracy of those models. Once it gathers all of the different metrics, it creates an auto-generated benchmarking report. This auto-generated benchmarking report contains plots, charts, and recommendations as to which model is the best suited for me in terms of price performance, as well as accuracy. An example of a report that gets generated can be seen on the screen. This shows us that FM Bench ran nine different foundation models on Amazon Bedrock. These nine different foundation model names are masked, but when you run this test on your end, these would be substituted by the model ID. So FM Bench runs this test on these models on different prompt sizes. A user can configure their own interest on which prompt size they want to generate a report on. In this case, I've configured a prompt size of 5,000 to 6,000 tokens, which is pretty large. Based on this, FM Bench gives me that model four is the most price performance optimal model because of associated metrics that we can see on this table. Associated metrics include latency numbers, price per token, price per transaction, prompt token count mean. I can even generate time to first token and time per output token as well and add it to this table. To generate a more visually interactive version of this chart and to also gather the same metrics for other models that we ran, FM Bench gives you an interactive way to interact with the chart that it generates. Here, we can see different models that were run and different metrics that are associated with each model as we hover over these model circles. We can see that model four indeed did perform the best and give the best price performance with the associated metrics. Now, say a user wants to really go ahead and see which models did not pass this experiment because of the constraints we put in the configuration file for our cost and latency budgets. We can view the failed experiments table to get insights on that. For example, model three failed the experiment because even though it was under the cost budget for us, it surpassed the latency budget of two seconds by 0.42 seconds. 
using this table, customers and users can make different trade-offs. In addition to the performance metrics, FM Bank also provides measurements of accuracy by using three LLM evaluators. These accuracy metrics include comparing the output of these LLMs being evaluated to ground truth included in the data set. So in this table over here, we are seeing that model one has the highest majority voting accuracy of 86.94% and then followed by the rest of the models. Now to evaluate the accuracy, we use the open source long bench data set that is available on Hugging Face and has uh, prompts for question answering. These prompts range from uh, 300 tokens to 6,000 and even higher token sizes. So we evaluate this accuracy over this entire range of prompt sizes. And what we find here is that as per this visualization, given an accuracy threshold of 80%, there were five models that had accuracy greater than that. So the idea being that we could look at this chart and say, well, these five models satisfied my accuracy constraints now I can look at the performance charts that we were looking at earlier and see which of these models satisfy my performance constraints in terms of inference latency, in terms of throughput, and even cost constraints. Cost constraints. So by combining these two, I'm able to then select an optimal model for my workload. Now the second chart over here shows the trajectory of model accuracy and how it varies with the uh, prompt sizes. So the idea here is that as my prompt size increase, there might be a, a decrease in the trajectory as we see here. And then depending upon your workload, whether the prompt sizes are between 2000 to 3000 as an example, or 5000 to 6000, you could decide as to how that prompt size is impacting the accuracy of your model. Once you've made the, those kind of business decisions on accuracy, price, performance of which model to choose, FM Bench also comes up with a bunch of different tables and metrics for you to make judgments on. First of all, FM Bench gives you insight into what did it actually cost to run a test on FM Bench. So it gives the cost associated to model benchmarking, in this case was about $12.55, as well as model evaluation cost, where running three of the LLMs as judges costed about $31.1. In total, it costed about $43.65, which in comparison to having a, a whole data science team sift through the data and come up with these metrics and compiling them, this seems to be like a good advantage. Now let's say that a customer or a user wants to get more detailed insight into how did each model perform with different prompt sizes. FM Bench provides a per instance results table which gives the performance of each model on each prompt size in a human readable way. For example, model one on a prompt size of 1000 to 2000 tokens gives the best option for staying within latency because it achieves a median latency of 0.91 seconds, average prompt size of 1605 tokens and other metrics. You can view different models and their performance associated with varying prompt sizes to get further insights. As we scroll down, we will see different plots that are generated where users can make more decisions. The first plot shows the error rate. And let's say a user wants to get a three dimensional view of how does my latency change as my token size increases and as my concurrency level increases. FM Bench gives a chart for this where you can view this easily. Here we can see that model one with uh, uh, on this chart remains almost static as my prompt size increases, which is my x-axis, and how my latency almost remains the same, which is my y-axis. On the other hand, if we look at model three, we will see a slight change as the prompt size increases. The response time for some of these transactions start, starts to become higher. Viewing this chart overall gives a higher level judgment of the trajectory of latency as the prompt size increases for each model at each concurrency level. At the end, FM Bench dumps the entire configuration file that was used to run the test. Users would want to consider looking into this file when they're sifting through the report, making business decisions, and would want to refer to which parameter was exactly used to configure that model. They can simply come to this configuration file and refer to that while making those decisions. 
So hopefully this quick overview of FM Bench and how to use it would have provided you an idea as to how to use this tool for benchmarking uh, your own foundation models for your use cases. Please take a look at the website and the readme file and reach out to us for your benchmarking needs. Our email addresses are on the website. Thank you. Thank you.